What if you took all the iconic themes of spring, like flowers and rain and daylight savings, and mushed them all together to create a person? What would their personality be like? What would their lifestyle be like? Well, so glad you asked. That's what I'm going to attempt to answer today as I create a character based off of the season of spring. Using Shwapa. Sh using Shwapa acrylic paint pens. Doing great on this sponsorship. Prepare yourself for a whole lot of pastel. Hello, I'm Zakira and welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, I'm going to be taking you guys through the process of creating an original character, giving y'all a peek into my brain <laughs> and, and how it creates things. And to create my character, I'm going to be using these Artistro acrylic paint pens. Artistro sent me these two sets to try out. And if you guys have seen my Posca palettes video, then you know that I have become quite the fan of acrylic paint pens. They're pretty delicious. So I am looking forward to giving these a try and giving you guys my thoughts on them, especially because they do have a pretty big variety of colors and are pretty affordable, just saying. So the first thing I'm going to do is crack open these pens and give them a test run. This way I can get an idea of the colors and feel of the material and keep all of that in mind as a reference point when I go to actually design my character. The first thing I did was activate the pens and swatch them. Just like any other paint pens, to activate them, you first shake them up, shake it like you mean it. Then you pump the nib to get the paint flowing. And once the nibs are nice and soaked, you're ready to draw. For those of you watching who may be new to this medium, acrylic paint pens are essentially a form of acrylic paint inside of a pen. I guess I didn't really need to explain that. The reason why it's special and loved by so many of us in the artist community, or at least the reason why I like them, because I do not want to speak on the behalf of my fellow artists, <laughs> is because they provide a way to lay down really bold, really opaque, flat layers of color in a very controlled manner that you wouldn't really be able to achieve with a brush. Not only that, but these pens are multi-surface, meaning they can be used on a wide variety of materials, including glass, wood, rocks, plastic, fabric, you name it. In fact, these Artistro pens actually came with these nice little cards that give instructions and tips on how to get the best results out of these pens depending on the surface you're drawing on, which I thought was a nice little touch. But of course, in this video, I'm just going to be using them on good old-fashioned paper. The two sets that I'm trying out in this video are the 30-piece medium tip set and the 42-piece extra fine tip set. And I chose these two tip sizes because they are similar to the two tip sizes of Posca pen that I use, so I was already comfortable and familiar with them. After the swatches were done, I did a few quick doodles to test the colors in practice, especially to see which colors would be most suited for skin tones, because that is always one of the hardest things to get your hands on when it comes to markers. For some reason, marker sets are always so void of a good nude. <laughs> but I was glad to see that there were actually four really solid colors that I could use as everyday skin tone bases, and probably like two, maybe three more colors that could still pass as skin tones, but would probably depend on the environment the character is in. If they were used for a character that is drawn on a purely blank white page, then it may look a little too yellow or too gray or whatnot. But maybe if the character was set in an environment that had a more, you know, yellow tint or gray tint, then it would work out pretty well. One thing that was different than I'm used to and I liked right away about these pens was that the body of the pen is transparent. You can see the paint inside. And this helped to make sure I was actually shaking the pens sufficiently because you can see when the paints are separated. Some of the colors you do have to shake quite a bit in order to get it to the right consistency, but once the pens are properly shaken, the colors do flow out nicely without any annoying wateriness or anything like that. I do feel like there were a couple of colors that were a little thinner than the rest and would create a bit of streakiness when I used only one layer. However, I found that if you just go over it again with another coat of the same color, then the result is nice and smooth and opaque just like the rest of the colors. 
I also tested out a couple of different papers to see which one I liked best with these pens. The swatches that you saw me do were done on Canton XL multimedia paper, which I did feel like worked pretty well, but I found that I definitely preferred this smooth Bristol paper. It's nice and thick and super smooth and the pens just glide right over. Delicious. I think that both of these sets came with a really great array of colors. The extra fine tip set had all of the same colors as the medium tip set plus 12 additional colors, giving me a total of 40 unique colors to choose from. So there's lots of possibilities for different palette combinations, including some nice springtime pastels, so I shouldn't have any issues with designing my character. So now that the pens are ready to go, my paper is picked out, and I have an idea on which colors I want to use, it is time to design a character based off of spring. All right. It's real time, Zakira, now. <laughs> but before we get into the super profesh finished illustration, I'm gonna do some thumbnailing to figure out how this character is gonna look. So I want her to be kind of cute because when I think of spring, I kind of think of cute. I mean, all those like pastel colors, flowers, Easter bunnies. And I'm just gonna get like a blank body here so I can kind of play around with the clothes and accessories and stuff. It doesn't have to be super perfect. Now, just had this idea of like, what if we made her into a magical girl? She is spring after all. She's a whole season. She deserves a little more than just like average character attributes. So we're gonna kind of give her like round, round eyes. I think spring is gonna have a pretty bubbly personality. Bubbly but kind of clueless. Probably because of, you know, the lack of sleep because of daylight savings. She's always late. To work she's always an hour late but she means well she's a good she's a good person and she's gonna be wearing an apron and the reason for that I think her her like incognito daytime life when she's not in magical girl mode is gonna be a florist because and she loves flowers and maybe the flower basket is um is like her scepter <laughs> it's like the equivalent of her sailor moon scepter that helps her transform that might be a little inconvenient to keep with you if it's a whole basket oh you know she's gonna have like a really big watch on her wrist because she can never remember what hour it is because she always feels an hour behind. She's a little clumsy. But she often like spills flowers, knocks flowers over, and then because of her like big fluffy hair, they often get stuck inside of her hair and she doesn't even notice. Ooh, pencil that on the loose! Pencil that on the loose! Ooh, maybe she does this thing where she wears shorts on top of leggings. I love that. Actually, I do that personally. I think it looks really cool. Maybe she has just like a cliche eye heart and then a symbol of a cherry blossom. I think cherry blossoms are kind of very ubiquitous with springtime. So I think I really want cherry blossoms to be a kind of a motif that, that shows up in her design. Okay, so I think we got her street like closed down and now I'm going to try to design her magical girl transformation. <laughs> I don't know what the heck pose this is, but <laughs> anyway. One of the main things that I just had an idea with and I'm kind of excited for it <laughs> is I want her hair to literally transform into like a cherry blossom branch, which I don't know how to actually achieve that look. Yeah, you know, I think it'll be easier when I can actually use the pens because then I can just like put spots instead of actually like drawing every single petal. Maybe her basket turns into a scepter. Ooh, maybe her basket is actually special. What if her basket look like this? It's kind of five prong thing. And then when she transforms, this handle goes up, these petals go down, and what happens is you get a big cherry blossom scepter. Okay, I think we're looking pretty good. I think I'm going to figure out most of the like small details on the skirt and stuff when I actually draw the, the finished drawing. So we've got incognito spring and magical girl spring. 
blue, yellow, and pink, I think are gonna be the main colors I go with because I feel like those are the colors that really remind me of spring. Though green also tends to be pretty spring-like. And this will probably be used for like the bark of a cherry tree or cherry branch hair. All right, I think we got some good sketches to work with. So let's get drawing for real now, shall we? So when it came to the overall feel of this character, I wanted her to be very girlish and very youthful. Spring is the time of the year when animals come out of hibernation, plants start sprouting, and it's all about rebirth and that good old cyclo life stuff. But at the same time, I wanted her to still be somewhat of a modern day teenager. You know, with a, with a little chic and a little edge. I did change slash add a couple of things to Spring's final design that weren't in the thumbnail sketches. For one, her apron. I originally gave her this roughly layered apron, but I ended up feeling like it was a little too princessy and made her look just a little too young. So instead I changed it to a more regular flat apron, but with this neat little cherry blossom painting on it. I also gave her two little parakeet companions named Pri and Ni. Pri is the orange and yellow one, and he's a bit of a bird brain, kind of dumb, repeats random words people say without knowing what they mean, but he's really sweet. Ni, on the other hand, is the total opposite. Ni is the dark, arrogant, intellectual type. He can carry on entire conversations with humans and speaks with an eloquent British English accent. Much more eloquent than mine, believe me. He believes he is a genius surrounded by idiots and having his soul trapped in this tiny, adorable creature must have been punishment for something heinous he did in his past life. I love them both. Overall, I definitely attacked Spring's whole character from a pretty humorous viewpoint, embracing a bunch of cliches, even to the point of drawing the first character sheet with that list of likes and dislikes, which is probably one of the biggest cliches within the artist community. And at first, I didn't even think to go any farther than just a few cutesy, superficial attributes. But as I continued drawing and thinking about her, I got a little carried away and started thinking deeper about her personality and her relationship with the other seasons and now she, she just might be one of my favorite OCs. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I wrote up a little introduction to Spring's life and personality, which I will narrate for you guys near the end of this video, so stay tuned. But moving back to the design of this character, the magical girl aspect was actually kind of inspired by the tools I was using. After seeing the swatches of the paint pens and all of these like vibrant, opaque colors, it really reminded me of those nostalgic, bold, flat animation styles of 90s anime and cartoons, which I ended up kind of embracing with this character. I always find that the physical tools that I use do end up influencing the overall outcome and feel of whatever I'm drawing, which is probably why my style tends to change so much. But hey, it also helps keep things really fresh and exciting, which is why I'm always switching up my mediums. And there's a tip actually, like if you ever find that your art is feeling stale or uncreative, switch up your medium and see where it takes you. You might be really surprised. And hey, if you're giving a new medium a try, maybe you should give paint pens a try. Which brings us to the sponsor of today's video, Artistro! <laughs> Come on, that was, that was a pretty good segue. Artistro is a family-owned art supply brand based right here in the United States. They offer a few different mediums, but specialize in paint pens, offering a wide variety of different sets, colors, and tip sizes. While browsing their site, I saw that you can also get individual colors, which is really great because if you run out of one color, you don't have to get an entirely new set. Personally, I tend to run out of skin tones pretty quickly because of all the characters I draw, so it's good to know I can refill on just the colors I need. Artistro's products are available both through Amazon as well as their website, artistro.com. But if you do order through their website, here's a little special code for you. Use Zakura10 during checkout to get 10% off your entire purchase. 
I'm really happy to be working with Artistro for this video because the founders of the brand are actually artists themselves and you can really tell this is true just by having a look around their website or their social media. They are very active in their community, creating tutorials and tips and giving inspiration. In addition, every item sold helps to support charity. So if you're looking for an affordable set of paint pens to try out or are looking to supplement the paint pens you already own with some additional colors, I can definitely recommend giving Artistro a try because I personally really enjoyed them. And if you do, once again, be sure to use the code and the links in the description box to get 10% off. And big thank you to Artistro for sponsoring this video. Now then, back to spring. So. I did keep the ruffles for Spring's Magical Girl transformation, and I actually made her dress kind of resemble a carnation, just as an extra hat tip to the whole flower theme. And I also gave her that cherry blossom hair I mentioned before that I was excited about, which I had no idea how it would turn out because there was no way for me to really sketch it properly, but it ended up coming out pretty darn cool, I gotta say, and I kind of love it. And as for her move list, because no 90s magical girl is complete without some cool way to attack the baddies. So I thought up a few moves with spring themed words like cherry blossom burst and pastel rain and my personal favorite sprout which causes a bunch of little flowers to sprout on her enemy's collar right next to their face so it agitates their pollen allergies only about 50% effective. Her special final move, aka I need three Dragon Ball Z episodes to charge up for this, is called Time Dilation. And what it does is send out a blast wave and anyone caught in the wave freezes in time. And it lasts, you guessed it, one hour. The people frozen don't experience the passage of time, so after it wears off, they feel like they just lost an hour of their life in the blink of an eye. Hmm. Wonder where I got that idea from. It is kind of a defensive move, but if you get your enemy frozen, then you can take your sweet time hitting them with whatever other attacks you want. So it's pretty much GG if Spring can manage a time dilation. And yeah, yep, yeah, that's Spring. <laughs> now, as promised, I shall read to you guys a little proper introduction to this character that I wrote up. So tuck yourselves in and here we go. Spring is a 15 year old teenage girl who stands at a whopping 4 foot 11 inches. But you better not make any remarks about her small size or youthful appearance because there's nothing that gets under Spring's skin more than people constantly thinking she's younger than she actually is. If she so much as hears a comment such as, where's your mommy? Or, are you allowed to be out this late? You better run because she will whoop yo ass. But beyond this trigger, for the most part, Spring is a very pleasant, hardworking, and loving person, albeit a somewhat clumsy one. Her internal clock seems to be incurably stuck an hour behind, causing her to often wake up groggy, forgetful, and late for her job as a florist apprentice. There, she's faced with an all-day battle between tripping over flower pots and dodging bee stings. As a clumsy florist who is allergic to bees, Spring likes to live on the edge. If you just had some coffee in the morning, maybe you wouldn't be such a klutz all the time. Autumn often likes to say it's a spring, but she knows full well coffee is a big no-no for spring. See, although mornings are rough for spring, that is pretty much where the struggle ends. By noontime, she's wide awake and full of boundless, bubbly energy. So much so that the added adrenaline boost of caffeine would have her practically bouncing off the walls. Her lifelong difficulty with waking up caused her to experiment with the seductive qualities of caffeine in the past, but it resulted in a few very embarrassing experiences that she prefers never to discuss again. So instead, Spring sticks with her favorite beverage, green tea, which she drinks almost religiously. Spring is loyal, caring, and full of empathy for all living things. She loves her friends like family and would do anything for them. However, her open and empathetic nature also makes her a bit naive and too trusting of people as well as those oh-so-attractive TV infomercials. But not to worry, her friends Summer, Autumn, and Winter have her back and are ready to intervene whenever Spring is about to fall for the latest scam. Ta -da -da! You have now been properly introduced to Spring. And a little bit of the other seasons too. Could this mean there's, there's, there's some sequels coming to this video? 
be sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comments if you'd like to see me design the rest of the Magical Girl seasons. Anywho, I had a lot of fun with designing this character. I think she came out really kawaii. And I'm definitely going to be drawing her again in the future. I'm also definitely going to be using these paint pens again. I really do feel like they were great to work with and it's awesome to have so many more colors of paint pens in my arsenal to play with. Anywho, that pretty much wraps up this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening and spending some of your day with me. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please be sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Also be sure to hit that little bell so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. If you have a minute, be sure to leave a comment down below letting me know what you think of this character. Is she kawaii enough for you? <laughs> I'll have all the links to the materials I use in this video as well as my shop and social media and all that linked down below in the description box so you can have a look over there. <laughs> and until next time, stay awesome, stay inspired, always. See ya!